In today's video, we are taking a look at how you can safely make your own breakaway glass at home. Guys, we love this studio. It has been our home for a really long time, but that said, it's a bit time for an update. So, we're going to be adding a few new things throughout the next coming videos, but before we get started on our project today, let's start with a fresh coat of paint. All right, guys, we have started redecorating the studio. As you can see, we're not done yet, but don't panic. It is going to be changing over the next few videos. And the idea right now is to get some decorations in place. So for the first decoration that I think that I want now, we have been working on building a new workbench, which is going to be fantastic. We're going to have a few new really useful things, but I think we need an in case of emergency box. Now what we put in this, we'll have to decide later, but for now, if we have an in case of emergency break glass box, we don't necessarily want actual broken glass all around the studio. So there are a few different ways that you can make safe breakaway glass for film or theater, anything like that. In modern film work, one of the most common forms of breakaway glass is actually smash glass or different types of breakaway plastic. Now, that's not how they used to do it. It used to actually just be a type of sugar glass. Now, sugar glass has the tendency of turning yellow if you try and harden it. So what we actually want to try today is sugar glass and then compare it with isomol. Sugar glass has the tendency of having a bit of a yellow tint as it caramelizes when it gets to the hard crack stage so it doesn't look perfectly clear. Now, isomalt is a little bit different. Isomalt tends to melt at a slightly lower temperature and ends up crystal clear. So that's what we're going to try today along with some sugar glass. See if we can actually get that in our shadow box to make our own break in case of emergency box. Here's the basic idea. We have got a shadow box. We have got some ice malt. We've got some sugar and we've got a few ideas on how we can turn this into some glass that we can break safely in the studio. So for our first few steps here, we're going to go ahead and take our ice malt, we're going to take our sugar, and we're going to get them melting on the stove. While that's going, we're going to take apart our shadow box and get rid of the actual glass, get it ready for our sugar glass. So when it comes to making breakaway glass at home, it's actually pretty simple. If you have sugar and you have a candy thermometer, then it's really, really easy. We'll go ahead and go over measurements in a couple of minutes. But if you can heat this sugar up to the hard crack stage and then pour it smooth, you shouldn't have any problems. As I said before though, it will be caramelized. You will have a slight discoloration, which is why we're going to try the ice malt as well. So we're going to go ahead and preheat our oven, preheat the stove and get this going. Now, because I know that the sugar is going to be discolored, I'm not even going to bother trying to put that into our breakaway box today. So I will be making a smaller sheet with our sugar glass and then we have a larger sheet that's actually smoother with no bent edges for our isomalt. So we're not going to have any problems with warping for the isomalt. I'm also aware that my shadow box has a piece of glass that is 10 by 20 inches and this uh, cookie sheet is a little bit larger than that. So I shouldn't have any problems there. Right now I'm just testing to see how much sugar I actually am going to be needing to make. Now this is two cups of water that I've just poured into the, uh, the pan for our sugar glass. It's not quite coating it thick enough to make me happy, so I think we're going to double this recipe. Might be a thicker pan, I might not use all of it, but that way I'd rather have more than less. So for your basic sugar recipe, this is going to be very simple. This is going to be four cups of sugar, a cup and a half of water, and then two two-third cups of corn syrup. We're going to go ahead and stir this on a low heat until it's fully dissolved and then we'll turn that up to a medium heat and we're going to go ahead and let this heat up until it hits hard crack stage and then we'll remove it from the heat and pour it directly into our mold. Guys, I have no idea if I got enough isomalt. You don't really need to use a lot of water for the isomalt, so let's just see how this looks. So I actually think this is going to be a perfect amount of ice malt. So one bag of Kitchen Alchemy, this is 2.2 pounds or 36 ounces of ice malt. I think that's gonna be pretty perfect for our 10 by 20 inch pane of glass that we need. However, I am going to use both bags. I did buy two bags of ice malt. I'm gonna melt it all, but I'm not gonna pour it all at the same time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it all melt down on the stove 
The oven will be preheated to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll go ahead and just let all of the bubbles sort of rise out of it to make it really, really clear. And then after that, we'll go ahead and pour two separate sheets. When melting ice malt, everyone does things a little bit differently. Some people say you want to add enough water for it to be the consistency of wet sand. Some people say you don't even need to add any at all. I like to add just a little bit to my pot to make sure that nothing's burning on the bottom, but then I just keep it at a low heat until it's all melted, then pop it into the oven to make sure that we get all of those bubbles rising to the surface. The main thing you really want to make sure of when you're working with ice malt is that all of your equipment is very, very clean. Distilled water is preferred. I have found that I've been able to get some very, very nice results without it. But do make sure you have a very clean pot, very clean spatula, and make sure not to cross-contaminate it with your sugar if you're melting them at the same time. We're gonna go ahead and keep a simmer for our sugar while our isomalt is melting. The isomalt's gonna be much slower, it's gonna be much calmer. While this hits a hard crack stage, this is simply just gonna melt down until uh, it's ready to go in the oven. So I would say we've probably got about 10 minutes where I can actually leave these, kind of let them melt as they go. So while they're melting on the stove, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the shadow box itself. So to begin with, this is a shadow box. These can be found at most craft stores, framing stores, things like that. Normally what they're used for is for pinning or placing little mementos that might be thicker that you might put in a normal frame. So you can see that we've got a pretty good depth here on this one. So it should give us a really nice sort of uh, emergency box. We can put any sort of emergency supplies in here that we might need. So first things first, we don't need the real glass, so let's take that out. Real glass removed. Our isomalt is not done melting, however, our sugar has hit its hard crack stage, and you can see it's actually already got that sort of a yellow tint. It's pretty much ready to pour. I want to do get my uh, tray ready for it. Now, while I'm not too worried about it sticking to my nonstick pan, I am going to add a very thin layer of cooking oil. It will uh, fog up the glass just a little bit, but less chance of it breaking when I try and pull it out later. You can see that there's obviously going to be a color change. That's not going to look like regular glass. It's still gonna be a nice, safe breakaway glass, but not the color we're going for, so we're gonna show you the difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this now and hope it cools and uh, comes out without breaking. Let's see. That is about 350 degrees Fahrenheit right now. So just tipping this tray, gotta be super careful. I'm gonna take this and we're just gonna dip the bottom to cool it down just enough so that it does stop cooking. It'll still be heated, but it won't be cooking anymore. Be very careful if you do this, because the steam rising is hot enough to burn you. There we go, but you can see that our bubbles have all calmed down. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this in the oven for about 15 minutes, again, just to get these bubbles to rise to the surface so that when we pour it, we get a nice clear glass look. Uh, oh, it's perfect, it's perfect! Yes! Ha 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 Oh, now I do wish I had my audio on because I'm like dancing over here. This is looking super good. The surface has a really interesting texture. Kind of looks like the surface of the moon. Guys, I stole Nate again because I needed a second pair of hands and he has hands. But we have got our sugar glass, we have got our isomalt glass, and we want to try and get these out of the pans. And I'm very worried that with just one set of hands, the bending is gonna probably break them. So here's the plan. I'm gonna try and tip them out. Once we've got them out, we will need to cut one down to size. And the way you do that is with a very, very hot knife. We've got our knives heating up on the stove. Yeah, this one. It's already actually popping already see, out of place. You can already see, yeah, it delaminates at the edges. Which is beautiful, which is exactly what we were going for. So and I, I am, think well, what we can do is we, if we put the cardboard over it and flip it, and then we can just gently press from the back on the metal plate, I think it will all release. All right, we can, we can give it a try. We can give it a try. I've never actually seen anybody try and make sheet ice malt before. Glass or oh, sugar glass, yes, but. I don't think I needed to do any pouring. That just yes! plopped right yes! out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that's gonna taste like cooking spray. 
No, it tastes great. This turned out so much better than we were expecting. Yes, because it is sugar glass. Yes, it does caramelize. It does turn, you know, a little bit yellow. But this is so much smoother than we were expecting. You can even see the logo of Harvest Right. So from our freeze dry pan, you can see it right there. So very, very hot knife. We've had it just boiling on the stove, but then I'm drying it so that it won't, it won't gum up our, our sugar glass. Now I know that supposedly this works with isomalt. I do not know if it works with sugar glass quite the same. So far I'm gonna say no, but we're still gonna try because even regular glass you can score and break. All right, yep, thousand degree knife challenge. Let's go for it. Aha! Hey, that looks like it did something. Wow, yeah, that was much, much more efficient. Well, that exactly. Was, that was slick. Just like that. That came off nice. Exactly how you do it. I just want it to be known, I don't know if it was caught on camera, he literally just said, hit me in the head, it's fine. I got this, just go for it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. star. We're gonna clean up and then we're gonna move on to our ice malt. All right, so sugar glass, it does work. You can make amazing breakaway panels with it. The ice malt is the one that's very clear. This is the one I'm excited about. This is the one that I want to put into our emergency kit box to put on the wall. So see if we can get it to come out just as easily as the sugar glass did. I'm gonna flip it towards you. Okay. Ready? Oh. Make sure that's out. That sounded like a break though. That sounds like okay. a crack. Please don't be broken, please don't be broken. It's not broken! Not a bit. <laughs> I call that one yes! amazing sheet. Ah, I think that's gonna be okay. And again, there's this bit of cloudiness from the oil, so I think we're gonna try and hit it with a torch again, see if we can clean it up just a little bit, and then we're gonna cut it down to size and get it into our emergency kit. We've got it in place. It's not perfectly smooth, so I'm gonna use our smaller torch See if we can clean that up a little bit and then we're gonna get some writing on it. Mess happening along the side here. There we go. All right guys, we've got it. In case of emergency, we are set. What else should we put in the studio? Guys, that's not all. We've always got more for you to see. That box up at the top will take you to our latest video, and that box at the bottom is what YouTube thinks you should be watching next. Hit this bomb in the middle to subscribe to the club so you never miss out on the fun. Don't forget to ring that bell, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.